This is 5.3 Bone Growth Notes. The essential question is, what are the major steps of bone growth and remodeling, and which cells and hormones aid in these processes? Ossification is the process of bone formation. There are two types of ossification. The first one is called intramembranous ossification. See the word intra, the prefix intra means within and membranous refers to membrane. So intramembranous ossification occurs in connective tissue membrane where membrane is directly turned into bone, into the compact bone on the outer layer and then the spongy bone in the inside layer with the trabeculae. Intramembranous ossification occurs in flat bones of the skull and other flat bones such as the mandible, ribs, and the clavicle. Fontanelles are areas of the skull that is still a membrane, and it is often called a soft spot, but what it is is where a junction of the skull bones meet. The anterior fontanelle is much bigger than the posterior fontanelle. And then also these sutures are where the bones meet. Recall that adults have 206 bones, but infants or babies or embryos before they're born, they have closer to 270 or so bones because of the fact that the bones haven't fused yet. As they get older, they become fused and become one bone. The other type of ossification is called endochondral ossification. Remember the prefix endo means in and chondral refers to cartilage. So endochondral ossification occurs in a hyaline cartilage. In embryos before the baby is born, the skeleton, the baby skeleton is primarily hyaline cartilage. And then right before it's born, or um, a few months before it's born, the hyaline cartilage gets replaced by bone. This is the endochondral ossification. So you notice in the picture below, the areas in the red are parts that are already ossified. In the areas around the fingers, and around the hips, the lighter area and the yellow or the white area, those are areas that are still cartilage. Endochondral ossification is the most common method of ossification and it occurs in long, short, and irregular bones. Notice in the picture below, the first bone is completely cartilage and then slowly at the center of the diaphysis, it starts to the, the cartilage breaks down and it calcifies and then this portion here, which is called the prom primary ossification center because that's where the first bone is forming. And then what happens is it gradually start growing out. Growing out. And then what happens is the center portion becomes the medullary cavity and then the outer layer become the compact bone that you see in the long bone. As this is going on, there is a second area of ossification and that occurs in the epiphysis. And these are areas at the center of the epiphysis called the secondary ossification center. And that's the second place where bone starts to form. So it starts at the center and then they start going outward and they start growing, growing out, okay? And then by the time the bone is fully formed, the only place that you're going to find is at the articular cartilage, which is at the ends of the bones, and the epiphyseal plate. And epiphyseal plate, as the child grows further, will be there until eventually they too will get replaced with bone and then will fuse together and become completely bone 
which then becomes the epiphyseal line. And the only remaining area that will remain cartilage throughout life will be the articular cartilage at the end of the bones. When we talk about bone growth, we mean the longitudinal lengthening of bone. And this can only occur because the epiphyseal plates are open, or it means that the epiphyseal plate it is still cartilage and it hasn't turned to bone yet. The new uh, the at the epiphyseal plate and at the articular cartilage, the cartilage is still continually being formed. And as the child is growing, the epiphyseal plate will still remain open, and on an x-ray, it will be a dark band. And as the child fully grows, and the epiphyseal plate has now completely turned to bone, what we'll have is a white line, which is called the epiphyseal line. And as the new cartilage is continually being formed, older cartilage is becoming ossified or turning to bone. What that means is the cartilage is being broken down and then it gets replaced by bone. And the way the lengthening occurs is that the cartilage, new cartilage is being formed on this side of the epiphyseal plate and then the bone formation occurs on this side, so the bone growth is continually going up. So you can see the level of bone growth between the three bones. So that is what is meant by bone growth, the longitudinal lengthening of bone. Appositional growth, on the other hand, is means that the bone is not only growing longer, it is going thicker. It means it is increasing in diameter. And how that's achieved is that the bone is being destroyed on the inside at the same time that the uh, more bone is being formed on the outside so that the diameter is increasing. This is important because if the bone is getting longer and staying the same thickness, then the bone is more likely to break. There are three types of cells involved in bone growth and appositional growth. The first is osteocyte, which are your bone, mature bone cells. Osteoblasts, their job is to form bone. So think of osteoblast has the letter B, so think of osteoblast as building bone. Whereas osteoclast with a C, they are bone destroying cells. So you could think of C as in cutting down bone. So osteoblast B builds bone, osteoclast with C cuts down bone. Bone remodeling is the changing of the shape of the bone as it's growing. So not only is the bone getting bigger in size when the bone is growing, it is also changing in shape. So when you compare a adult skeleton or bones and you compare them to a baby or a child's bone, it is not just a bigger size of the original bone, but it has changed in shape. That's why when you look at a baby picture and you compare it to an adult picture, yes, you can kind of tell that it's the same person, but they don't look exactly the same because their facial the bone structure has changed. During bone growth, the osteoblasts are a lot more active than osteoclasts because you're building more bone to get bigger. But in remodeling, the, the osteoclast and osteoblasts are imbalanced. So you're not technically making more bone. It's that you are just taking bone away from another area and building bone in a different area. So the net number of cells that you're making stays the same. And bone growth only occurs up to about puberty when you stop growing. Remodeling happens all throughout life. Some hormones that can affect growth of bone or growth in height. First one is growth hormone, which is produced by the pituitary gland. Remember, hormones are cr uh, created or made and secreted by the endocrine gland. Pituitary gland is located in the 
skull. Thyroid hormone is made by the thyroid gland, which is located around the neck region, and they stimulate epiphyseal plate closure, which means that if the plate closes, it stops growth. So if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, it means that you will grow uh, longer, that you will not stop growing. Testosterone, estrogen can also stimulate closure of the uh, epiphyseal plate, and osteoporosis is related to low levels of estrogen. Um, low levels of estrogen causes not enough calcium to be stored in the bones, which causes osteoporosis, which is weakening or brittle bones due to old age. Calcitonin is a hormone produced by the thyroid gland, and it inhibit, inhibits osteoclasts and stimulates osteoblasts. Remember, one of the functions of bone or the skeletal system is the storage of minerals, one of those being calcium. So when you eat too much calcium and there's too much calcium in the blood, then the calcitonin stimulates the osteoblast to take the calcium in the blood and put it into the bone for storage. And that's what causes bone to get stronger. The parathyroid hormone produced by the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland and the thyroid gland sits just at the base of the Adam's apple, at the base of the neck, just below the widest portion of the throat. And the parathyroid hormone, their job is to increase blood, blood calcium. Uh, so it has an opposite effect as calcitonin. So when there is not enough calcium in the blood or your body requires calcium, then the parathyroid hormone will stimulate the osteoclast to break down bone and put it into the blood so that it can be used. So calcitonin and parathyroid hormone creates a homeostasis for calcium levels in the blood. 5.3 notes homework, number one. What happens at the primary and secondary ossification centers? Number two, how do osteoclasts and osteoblasts work together for bone growth and remodeling? Number three, how do parathyroid hormone and calcitonin help in regulating blood calcium?